Over the course of the past 100 years, there have been over 30 large ammonium nitrate explosions worldwide, causing serious destruction and thousands of deaths. On August 4, 2020, a deafening explosion rocked the area around the port of Beirut in Lebanon. It was so powerful that some mistook it for an atom bomb. In fact, it was an accidental detonation of ammonium nitrate, which is most often used as a form of fertilizer. But if this explosion had nothing to do with an atom bomb, then what caused the mushroom cloud and all the red smoke? In this episode of Simple Infographics, we'll discuss why the explosion at the Beirut root port warehouse was so catastrophic. Experts estimate the energy released by the explosion to be between 200 and 500 tons of TNT equivalent, which is similar to the amount of energy released by an earthquake that registers as more than a 3 on the Richter scale. The blast wave knocked out windows and damaged buildings within a radius of a few kilometers, turned cars upside down, caused a massive amount of destruction, and took the lives of over 150 people, not to mention the 5,000 others that left wounded. The explosion left a crater with a diameter of 140 meters, or 460 feet, which flooded with seawater. On satellite images, the immense destruction caused by the blast is clearly visible, and it appears that one ship was thrown out of the water and onto a pier as a result of the explosion. The aftershocks of the disaster reached Cyprus, 240 kilometers or 149 miles from Lebanon, and all this mayhem was caused by small powdered granules of ammonium nitrate stored in a warehouse. This chemical substance is formed from ammonia and nitric acid and is used extensively around the world as an agricultural fertilizer. Its high nitrate content made it extremely popular in crop production, and the admixture of chalk powder made the substance affordable. Ammonium nitrate is also used in medicine thanks to its ability to rapidly dissolve and absorb warmth. When a small quantity of the powder is combined with water, the mixture turns into instant ice. Packets with this instant ice are applied to damaged tissues in the case of bruises or burns. But ammonium nitrate is much more rarely used in this way than for agricultural purposes. Finally, it can be included among the contents of explosive materials. For example, in the mining industry, saltpeter is combined with oil and used for controlled explosions in order to develop deposits. Otherwise, it can be combined with components of rocket fuel for the same purpose. The explosive potential of ammonium nitrate fertilizer has been used multiple times by terrorists, so the purchase and storage of ammonium nitrate is strictly regulated by the government in most countries. Assessing the scale of destruction in Beirut, one might think that a large amount of this chemical detonated in the city's port, but that's not the case. Each year, about 300 kilograms or 661 pounds of ammonium nitrate are applied to each hectare of agricultural land, and 2,700 tons were stored in the ill-fated warehouse in Beirut. In other words, this quantity would be enough to fertilize 9,000 hectares of land, which would comprise of a medium-sized farm. Additionally, the chalk or limestone powder mixed with the nitrate to reduce its price also reduces its explosive potential. The addition of these powders raise the temperature required for detonation and accordingly lower the risk of detonation. Finally, the substance does not burn on its own, and under normal conditions, it's not capable of provoking such a devastating blast. So why did it happen in Beirut? The fact is that ammonium nitrate is very sensitive to heat. As soon as the surrounding temperature exceeds 32 degrees Celsius, a chemical reaction begins. Atoms change their place, altering the characteristics of the substance. At 170 degrees Celsius, a gradual decay begins. Significant heating causes the ammonium nitrate to decompose into its component substances, water, nitrogen, and oxygen, thereby becoming an explosive mixture. That means an explosion or fire near the storage area can cause a large detonation. Excessive humidity and temperature fluctuations also increase this risk. If stored improperly, the substance begins to absorb moisture from the air. Because of this, it's important to store ammonium nitrate and sealed packages in a ventilated room at a temperature no greater than 32 degrees Celsius. The blast potential of ammonium nitrate is approximately one-third that of TNT, but it's still necessary to be extremely careful and to observe all safety measures in handling and storing it. And it was this exact safety measure that was not observed in the Beirut warehouse. The substance was stored in a simple warehouse by the wharf for six years since it was confiscated from the ship Rosas. Possible reasons for the detonation include welding, pyrotechnics, ammunition, or even a planned attack. A video appeared online showing a small fire and exploding fireworks near the warehouse. This fire could well have caused the ammonium nitrate explosion. It was a double explosion, with the second explosion causing a strong shockwave that swept through the Lebanese capital. Under such conditions, a sharp change in pressure occurs, which can cause injuries to internal organs such as the lungs and intestines. This can also result in death. Other injuries can be caused by debris. Finally, if a person manages to escape injury from both debris and the blast wave, he or she could be injured by being thrown against some surface. Additionally, a large amount of dangerous chemicals is released into the air, which can also be harmful to the health of those in the affected area. Soon after the thunderous explosion, eyewitnesses saw red clouds in the shape of a mushroom. One Twitter account with over 100,000 followers suggested the explosion was an atomic attack, evidenced by this mushroom cloud. But before the post was deleted, it was liked and retweeted by thousands of the network's users. But the real reason for its appearance was not an atomic weapon, but poisonous, gaseous nitrogen oxide with an unpleasant odor, which was released at the moment the disaster occurred. But why did it take on such a specific shape? In fact, mushroom clouds appear after any powerful explosion 
explosion. In this case, an incandescent rarefied gas is formed in the center of the blast, which forms a leg as it rises. When it reaches a height with a lower air density, it spreads out, forming the mushroom's cap. Further evidence that the explosion was not atomic comes in the form of the absence of a blinding white flash, as well as the lack of heat radiation burns on people in the area. A white cloud of condensed it followed the blast wave in Beirut. This phenomenon is often observed after powerful explosions and humid climates. The total damage resulting from the explosion was estimated to be between three and five billion dollars. An international team of journalists led their own investigation of the incident. It was discovered that the organization that ordered the nitrate was suspected of engaging in the illegal weapons trade and of supplying explosives to criminals. The substance turned out to have been abandoned, and the purchaser simply ordered a new batch. In 2015, a British intermediary company wanted to take the saltpeter. The team examined the contents of the warehouse and found that the saltpeter had been stored in poor conditions and posed a considerable threat to the surrounding area. It was also found to have been kept long past its expiration date. As a result, the ammonium nitrate was not fit for sale and was simply kept in the warehouse. The blast in Beirut provoked such an outcry that 7,000 protesters filled the city streets and demanded the resignation of the government. They occupied a number of government buildings, and in the end, the military had to be called in. A two-week state of emergency was declared in the city. As a result of all these actions, hundreds more suffered. What can be done to prevent such tragedies in the future? American scientists already found a solution back in 2013. Ammonium nitrate can be effectively neutralized by mixing it with iron sulfate, which is used to save wood from mold and rot. As previously mentioned, the blast in Beirut was far from the only disaster brought about by ammonium nitrate. The largest ever disaster of this kind occurred in America, in the port of Texas City in 1947. 2,100 tons of the substance being stored in the port detonated because of a fire on a French ship. The blast caused damage to nearby vessels and gas storage facilities, and even sent a one and a half ton anchor flying some three kilometers off. The disaster took the lives of nearly 600 people and injured more than 5,000 others. The fire caused by the explosion raised the number of deaths to one and a half thousand. Witnesses to this disaster also observed a non-atomic mushroom cloud, which was mistaken as a sign of a nuclear attack. An ammonium nitrate explosion in the German port of Uphau in 1921 was nearly as powerful. A chemical plant there was engaged in the manufacturing of explosives and poisonous gases, and fertilizers from ammonium nitrate and ammonium sulfate. The hardened stockpiles of fertilizer were stored in a clay pit in order to avoid any human casualties. They were taken out with the help of small explosions rather than by human hands. Such controlled explosions were used about 20,000 times before one of them resulted in tragedy. Perhaps the summer was too dry, or there had been an error during the storage of the substance, or some other miscalculation led to the detonation of the ammonium nitrate. More than 500 people perished, 2,000 were wounded, and the wave of destruction spread over dozens of kilometers. The catastrophe in the Chinese port of Tianjin in 2015 was one of the deadliest chemical industrial accidents in world history. Containers of nitrocellulose overheated in the sun and caught fire. The blaze led to the detonation of the ammonium nitrate and other dangerous substances stored in the containers. This tragedy led to the deaths of 173 people and the injury of 789 others. Over a thousand vehicles were also damaged or destroyed. Over the course of the subsequent investigation, 48 individuals were brought to trial. The head of the company responsible for storing the dangerous substance was sentenced to death. It was discovered that he had bribed officials in order to continue storing the chemicals in the port unhindered. Unfortunately, these explosions are unlikely to be the last disasters to occur as a result of a careless attitude towards safety measures or an unfortunate confluence of events. Let us recount other similar incidents throughout history. In 1972, vessels arrived in the harbor of a Canadian port, a French vessel transporting explosive materials and a Norwegian merchant ship. One ship was leaving the port while the other entered. For whatever reason, neither ship was willing to make way for the other. At the decisive moment, they were unable to avoid a collision, and the Norwegian steamship smashed into the French vessel. The impact led to a benzene leak, which was ignited by sparks caused by the sailors' attempts to disengage the ships from each other. This resulted in a fire and a powerful explosion. The northern portion of the port of Halifax was immediately turned to ruins. 2,000 people died, and five times as many were injured. This incident also sparked the most unthinkable rumors, all the way up to a German plot to bomb the city. And in 1944, in the later stages of the Second World War, two vessels transporting ammunition in Port Chicago exploded in a powerful blast. All 320 sailors on both ships died in the explosion, their bodies thrown up to a kilometer and a half from the epicenter of the blast. The city was also nearly destroyed in its entirety. The port resumed operations a few weeks after the disaster, but 258 black sailors refused to transport explosives any longer. 208 of them later decided to obey the order, but in the end, they were dishonorably discharged from the Navy. The other 50 were sentenced to hard labor. The reason for the explosion in Port Chicago has remained a secret to this day. In India, in 2018, a gas cylinder exploded near a wedding venue. The building where a ceremony was taking place was destroyed, leading to 18 deaths and as many injuries. And in China in 2020, a vehicle with a tank carrying liquefied gas exploded on a highway. The explosion threw the container 100 meters away. It fell on a building, causing a second explosion. The incident resulted in much destruction as well as 20 deaths and 24 injured. What do you think? Is it possible?
possible to take all nuances into account and ensure complete safety when working with substances that require special delicacy in handling? Or will there always be some risk even when the proper safety measures are observed? Let us know what you think in the comments.